Since 776, the Olympic Games have been the most important sporting event in the world. With climbing being featured as an event for the first time in the Tokyo Olympics, climbing athletes have been pushing their limits like they've never done before in order to qualify. There are some climbers you may have heard of, and some you probably have never heard of. In this series, we're going to explore who these climbers are, what it took for them to qualify, and what it will take them to win Olympic gold. My name is Albert Oak, and these are the Olympic Climbers. Alana Yip is Canada's female representative, who is currently 27 years of age. Alana joined her local youth team at 9 years old, competed for the first time when she was 10 and made the national team when she was 12. From here on out, she would dominate the Canadian climbing scene, winning several national championships in all three disciplines of bouldering, lead and speed. She also was the first Canadian woman to make the finals of a World Cup event at the Bouldering World Cup in Chongqing 2017. When you look at her track record, it's easy to think that she's always been training and competing hard, always focusing on climbing. However, in Alana's case, it wasn't always this way. She explains that after graduating high school, she looked towards studying mechanical engineering at the University of British Columbia and quit climbing for a while. Being a full-time climber isn't the most clear-cut financially stable thing to pursue, so it's natural for even the best climbers to want to pursue further education as a means to create a stable future. Fortunately for the world of climbing, Alana made a return to climbing several months later. Now, even during the time of her return to climbing and competing, she even had doubts of whether to continue or not. In 2015, she studied abroad and during her time there, she competed in the Swiss Cup and Swiss Bouldering Championship and after difficult competitions, she lamented. I was left wondering what, if any, joy I get out of competing. Why should I compete when more often than not, I am left feeling angry and upset at the end of it? After seeking advice from her coach at the time, Urs Stocker, he gave her the fuel she needed and said that he thought she enjoyed competitions. Perhaps it was a time away from Canada, the outdoor trips she was able to go on, or what Urs Stocker told her, but when she returned to Canada, the fire was ignited and she was ready to compete. After returning from Switzerland, she competed and won the Canadian National Championship in 2016. As I mentioned earlier, the year after, she made Canadian history by being the first female to ever make the finals in a World Cup event by getting 5th place at Chongqing. Through 2017-2018, she would place very well in international competitions and not just bouldering but lead as well. Now, it's important to note that during all of this, she juggled schooling and graduated from the University of British Columbia in 2018 with a BA in Science for Mechanical Engineering. The combined qualifiers for the Olympic slots look sort of like a multi-level funnel. At the top we have the Hachiochi event where, as mentioned in the previous episode, the top 7 from distinct countries would get a ticket. Then the second event to qualify was Toulouse where the top 6 from a distinct country would get a ticket. Then there were regional events in being the Pan American Championship, European Championship, Asian Championship, African Championship, and Oceanic Championship. Where the winner of those events, as long as they didn't exceed the per country quota of 2 competitors per gender, would get a ticket to the Olympic Games. Alana finished 18th at the Hachiochi combined qualifier event, so naturally, she tried her best to get a ticket at the Toulouse qualifying event but there she got 13th place. Her last and final shot was at the 2020 Pan American Championship. Now this event was really special because I was able to watch the event in person in Los Angeles. Quick shout out to Geek Climber and John Krause since I was able to hang out with them and climb with them as well. I think this qualifying event really showed the volatility of the combined format. A single mistake can have a serious ripple effect on your overall score and the winner can be ultimately decided by who reached a single hold higher, who topped a boulder in one less attempt, and who ran a few milliseconds faster. After the qualifying round, Alana finished 6th going into finals. In finals, she got 5th in the speed round. It was up to her to have a perfect round in bouldering and do the best she could do in lead. In bouldering, she was the only competitor to top all three boulders and got first place, making her multiplied score of 5. The scoreboard at the time looked like this going into the lead climbing portion of the event. There were so many different permutations of scores that could have pretty much any of the top non-American females win. At this event, all the American competitors were just competing to compete since Brooke Rabatou and Kyra Condi had already filled the United States quota. 
but this also meant that they could play spoiler to a competitor's score. For instance, if Alejandra Contreras gets first and Alana gets second, then Alejandra would win since she would have a score of 9 and Alana would have a combined score of 10. But if Emma Hunt from America came out and got a 1 in lead, making her score a combined 14, it would make Alejandra score 18 and Alana's 15, meaning Alana would now get overall second place and get the Olympic ticket. I'll let you do the combinations and permutations of possible scores, but I say volatile because honestly anyone could win. And it's really hard to tell who is going to win until the final competitor is done climbing. Chile's Alejandra Contreras made the high point before Alana Yip and put herself in first place with a cumulative score of 9. When Alana came out, she didn't know how high she had to get in order to win. However, after she made the high point and came down, it wasn't until her teammate Becca Frangos came up to her and told her the news and we got this heart-touching moment. Disappointment in Toulouse, and finally, she's made Tears it. Of joy as her teammate Becca Frangos tells her the good news that she's going to Tokyo. So much relief. I mean, to have worked that hard. Alana's story doesn't end at her winning the Pan American Championship and getting a ticket to the Olympics though. In order for her to get the elusive gold, there are a few things going for her that can give her a chance at first place. She is a consistent speed climber which is very crucial to be in this combined format. Any slips or false starts of other climbers means she can easily rocket up the standings in speed. Her lead climbing is a discipline where, with an extra year of training, I'm sure we can see her put up even more impressive results than she has already shown. And bouldering, well since this is probably her best event, she should try and get as high of a placement in bouldering as possible, as that will greatly reduce her score. Since she is a more well-rounded athlete than others, placing high in all three categories could be her way to the top of the podium. She doesn't necessarily have to win any discipline to win the event. She just has to have a very high well-rounded score, which is very possible for her. I think after watching the Pan American Championship, people really started to see the volatility of the combined format and how honestly anyone can win. It's not over until it's over. Now I have to talk a bit about Alana's journey and a weird thing that I discovered that I don't even really think she knows about. So earlier in the video, remember when I mentioned how in 2015 she had doubts about competing? Then she came back in 2016 and won the Canadian Bouldering National Championship? Well, if we look back at the date of the competition, it was February 28th, 2016. And the day she posted about her winnings on Instagram was February 29th. Now, I'm sure all of this is pure coincidence, but four years later, she earned her ticket to the Olympics on what date? That's right, February 29th, 2020. She leaped back into competition on the leap year of 2016 and leaped into the Olympics in 2020. So whether she'll be leaping to the top of the podium, leaping into a career outside of climbing, or just being an overall awesome climber to look up to, I think we can all agree on one thing. That her hard work that led up to this moment all inspired us to chase our dreams. Good luck, Elena, and keep crushing it. Mm -hmm.